Hi there. Thanks for joining this short video. My name is Kelly Savage and I am a speech pathologist consultant for Liberator based in Western Australia. This short video is out of the box and it's designed to help you setting up your accent device when it arrives for trial or even if it's your brand new device. This video is designed to complement our trial handbook, which is available at this link on our website, which is a simple five step guide with all the information you need to be able to support a communication device trial. It's full of links to a range of resources to help you with goal setting, data collection, and lots of tips to help you evaluate and implement your AAC trials. In particular, step three of the handbook talks about what to do to set up your device before you hand it over to the individual that's going to be using it. This presentation today will focus on the accent device and there will be another presentation pre video prepared for the Saltillo range of devices. So this video will cover how to load and rename your user area, how to set up your access method and your voice, how to use the word finder, an important feature to show all communication partners and the individual. I'll show you some simple programming for adding a word into the device that customized personalized vocabulary. I'll show you how to turn on the data logging and how to save and load your user area if you are using the PASS software on your computer. Sometimes people like to do their programming before their trial device arrives and that's done on the PASS software uh, and then when the device arrives they can just transfer it over via USB. Some individuals might require the toolbox to be locked to prevent accessing the settings and other menus. I can quickly show you how to do that and then an important procedure for how to shut down the accent device. Okay. So I'll just flip over now to my software. I'll be using the new voice pass software on my computer today, but it's the same, looks the same as the software that you will have on the device itself. So once you turn the device on, you will need to choose and load the vocabulary that you're planning to use. If you're not sure which vocabulary you should be using or you're wanting to use, please don't hesitate to contact us. All right, so when you turn the device on, it should open this exploration wizard. Normally I take a look under explore and you can then have a look at Unity, Lamp Words for Life, Core Scanner, the different systems that are available on the device. Once you click on one, you can go in and read more information and you can make a decision about which particular vocabulary you would like to choose. Back on this screen, I can go to choose. And today I'm going to choose Unity, sequenced, 84. At this point, it will ask you, do you want to change your user area? Normally I leave it how it is, but I just add the person's name at the end so that I can locate that user area in the menu later on, especially it's important for backing up the device. I can see which one's mine. And then I click OK. All right, so I can see now that it's loaded Unity 84 sequenced, Kelly. Next step would be to think about your access method, how the person will be interacting with the device, and also choosing a voice. So that's under here, toolbox, and then yellow toolbox. And I'm gonna head into the access method menu. You can see at the moment it's set on touch screen and there are some settings down here, acceptance time, how long the person has to hold each cell for for it to activate, release time, how long they have to have their finger off before it activates, another button. These settings can be changed depending on the person's fine motor skills and needs. If you need to choose a different access method, that button's just up here. And this is where you can change the device to be activated by one switch, two switch, new point or joystick, or eye gaze. If you need more information about these access methods, please don't hesitate to contact us. So I'm happy with touch and the standard settings that are there, so I'm going to click OK. Next, if you want to change the voice, you can go into speech menu 
And then you can choose change voice to explore the range of voices available on the device. Here you can also change the speech rate to make it faster or slower. On this side, you can see there's a menu for adding pronunciations. If you find that the device is saying, for example, a person's name incorrectly, you can head in here and add a pronunciation so that it will say the word correctly. Okay, so once those two settings are good to go, the next thing I would do is make sure I know how to use the word finder and I would teach the important communication partners how to use the word finder as well. This is a handy tool, particularly if people aren't familiar with Unity or LAMP, helping them to locate the words within the vocabulary. So normally it's located under the keyboard and then word finder. And from here, I can type in any word and click OK. And it will tell me the icon sequence. From here, I've got two options. Show me will just take me through the steps to find that word. I particularly like to use guide me and to work with the individual to help them find the word. So if you click on guide me, what it will do is it will blank out the rest of the vocabulary and just show where that particular sequence is to find that word. Next, you might want to do some simple programming. So adding in maybe people's names, places, any personalised vocabulary like, for example, a person's favourite things. Always be sure to check in the word finder first in case the word is already within the vocabulary. So I like to play games, so I'm going to head in here and there's a section for my games and you can see it's giving me a whole blank page ready to load in my favourite games. So to add a word, you click on toolbox and then set up key and then choose the particular cell where you want to add a word. From here, you really just need to follow these light blue icons. So the first one is to change the icon. And you can look into any of these categories to find a picture. But in this case, I'm going to choose to spell icon. I find that's the quickest. So I'm going to add in the game Hungry Hippos. So I'm going to type in the word hippo. And then I can choose whichever one I like. When you choose an icon, you'll see it automatically will pop in the text to speak and it will change the label. But in this case, the game's called Hungry Hungry Hippos. So I'm going to go here to spell message, delete what's there and type in what I want that button to say. Always put a space at the end. All right. Now I can also change the label. So in this case, I might just have the label say hippo. From here, if I'm finished editing, I can click OK. Or if I wanna add some more games, I can say choose next key. Grab another one and then follow those same steps to be able to add in another button. When you're finished, you can just click OK. And I always like to check that it saved that word for me. Maybe I'll show you under names now. So in Unity 84 sequence, there is space for all the different people. So I might head in here to my family and I'll follow the same steps. Toolbox, setup key, choose whichever button I want, change icon. From here, you might want to add a photograph and you can do that here from import icon. Let me see. Okay, so from here, I found a picture of the person that I want to add from my family. I'm going to click OK. And because I'd labeled my picture before, it's automatically updated. Spell message, change label. However, if I did want to update those, I could go in here and say, this is Uncle Nick. OK. OK. There we go. So that's some simple programming for you. The most important thing before you go to the setup key is make sure you're on the page where you want to add. So go to the page first, make sure you can see that button that you want to edit or that you want to add, and then go up to your setup key and choose. All right, data logging. 
particularly if you're doing a trial, it's important to collect evidence in terms of how much the individual use the device. So to turn on data logging, you first want to check that the clock is correct because the data logging report will have the specific dates and times. So to do that, you would go into your toolbox, yellow toolbox, clock menu, and from here, you can adjust the date and the time. Once you've done that, you're going to head into review vocabulary menu. And here is the data logging. So you want to make sure that's turned on. From there, you can head into data logging and realize. You can clear any data that might already be there at the start of the trial. You can log into your Realize account. If you're not sure what that is, please feel free to contact us. And at the end of the trial, once you have a data log, you would click on here to save the data log and you can then export that out onto your USB stick. The main thing is make sure it's turned on before you start the trial so that you've got all that vocabulary and, and device use being collected. Now, I mentioned that I'm using the New Voice Pass software, which is available for download from our website. It can be handy to download this before your trial so that you can explore it and get familiar with it. And you can even do some of your programming in advance and then transfer the user file across to a USB stick and then into the device. So I'm going to show you those steps now. It's also important if you're setting up the user file directly on the device when it arrives, that you do a backup of it before you hand the device over to the client. Just in case something happens, you'll have that backup file that you can reload. So if I wanted to save this user file with the games and people that I've already loaded in, I can click on toolbox, yellow toolbox, transfer memory menu. And in this case, I'm gonna save one user area. I'm going to choose the one that we relabeled before. And then it's going to ask you, where do you want to save this folder? So I'm going to say here, I'm going to choose a different folder. And then you might save it on your computer in your My Documents. But I've got my USB stick here, which is the D drive. So I'm going to click on that, click OK. And then I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this Kelly Unity 84 Sequenced. And normally I would put the date. Zero two zero four You'll see it will transfer is in progress. So that's saving that whole user area onto my USB stick. While that's loading, after this step, you would take the USB stick out of your computer where the pass software was loaded and you've done your customizing, take it over and plug it into the accent. You would load this same transfer memory menu, but in this case, you're not saving one user area. You're actually going to say, I want to load that user area. So I want to load it off the stick and onto the device. You would pick a spot. So I'm going to pop it in here and then it would take you out to your USB stick, find the file, and then it will basically bring it across and load it into the device. All right, almost there. The next thing I wanted to show you is how to lock the toolbox. Now this can be important if you're concerned that the user might get into the settings or they might be distracting for them. So to do that, there's two ways. I'll show you the most common way today. So you go into your toolbox and then into your maintenance menu here. And we're going to choose toolbox restrictions. You're going to turn those on. And then from here, you can choose, I think the most common type is to set a password. Okay, so I'm going to make sure it says password. Then I'm going to create a password. In this case, we'll just call it test and click OK, 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 and OK. Now you can hand the device over to the individual. If they happen to click up here and go onto toolbox, 
it will actually pop up on the device with the keyboard. And then you would be required to enter in the password in order to access the toolbox. Okay. The other way that you can do it under maintenance menu toolbox restrictions is you can set it up to only be unlocked when you plug in a USB stick. And that USB stick needs to be loaded with a special override tool. So if you think that even having that little toolbox button up there is going to be distracting to the person or the keyboard popping up to enter the password is going to be distracting, then let us know and we can help you load up a USB with the toolbox override on there so that that will mean this toolbox button won't be accessible at all, only when you plug in that particular USB stick. All right, the last thing I want to show you, which is really important for the accent, is how to shut it down correctly. So you're going to click on the toolbox at the end of the day when you're plugging it into charge, and then you're going to go shut down. And on the device, it will bring up, are you sure you want to shut down? And you're going to click yes. So it's really important to do that and not just put the device to sleep with the button at the top. A full shutdown is really recommended um, to you each night when you're popping it on charge. Okay, so we've been through all those steps. Hopefully that was clear and you're able to um, set up your new accent ready for trial. If you're interested in more videos, different step-by-step -step videos on different functions of the accent, please head to our website or you can search for our YouTube channel. Our team is here to support you with your trial, so please don't hesitate to contact us. You can get all of our details on our website and even look up the direct contact details of your local consultant that's supporting your state. Thanks everyone for tuning in and good luck with your accent.